to talk about wh what the practices are. So I mentioned something about integrated reporting, sustainability reporting, and annual reports. What is the difference between the three, okay? Sustainability reporting, which means you have a sustainability report, is normally focusing on the most significant impacts, whether positive or negative. So anything which having positive impact from say, sustainability L level will be disclosed there. And this should be informed by science-based environments resolved and agreed social priorities, which means here is beyond a little bit the, the expertise of accountants. That's why we're talking about here having a group of people rather than just an auditor or an ASG assurer. It needs to be a team with some expertise like people with coming from uh, biomedical sciences, people coming from um, uh, bioengineering backgrounds, and that might help. Integrated reporting is just a little bit different. It's not about significant impact. Anything related to risk and opportunities must be disclosed. So the terminology is a bit different, but here they need to have an impact on the cash flows. So here is more, and the integrated reporting is more accounting focused. The, the sustainability report is more wider. The graded reporting is more focused or more specific towards areas relevant to accountancy or accountability, while sustainability reporting is more wider. And of course, financial accounting is more or less. So that's why I see here from the area, the, per, the um, call it the orange area is, is more wider. The green here is smaller. And then the most limited is the financial report. So coming back to a question about uh, why we're doing that, and I think Alexander was asking this question, is about how they are different in terms of the focus. So sustainability reporting is wider, integrated reporting is more focused, and then financial reporting is more focused. And you can see here, this is uh, more inform informed by the 17 goals we're talking about, the GRI and the EU um, um, referendum, which the three areas I've just talked about, while the integrated reporting is more about the standards and the reporting here, or the financial reporting or the annual report, just IFRS, FASP or ASP. So it's more, it's more, um, it's more focused. So you can see one organization moving from an annual report to integrated report to sustainability report, they're increasing the scope. They're increasing what they're going to disclose and how they provide assurance. Of course, be careful moving from this area, which is financial reporting to sustainability reporting. It's a little bit costly because here generating this information might need more people, more systems and more uh, data processing. So that might be more costly. And of course, the assurance associated with it will be even more difficult and more costly. So in Europe, how companies disclose. So we can see here that the 68% here is the year when you're having 68% of the organizations, they do with zero score. What do I mean by zero score? It means they do it with very less scoring, which means very less ASG scoring. So you can see 68% and then 66, 68, 66, 68% 60 till 2014, which are declining here. That loss of organization having zero score. What do I mean by zero score? They don't disclose anything about ASG. So you can see this is declining. The zero per zero scores companies are declining, while a little bit increase on those with the 100% score, which is having 100% of disclosure, but there was a decline here. And when you looked at these 2014 areas, this work organizations start to recognize that it is a lot of cost, a lot of money. So they started very, very uh, enthusiastic about disclosing more and more and more. So 24 24% of companies were disclosing almost 100% score, which means disclosing every ASG information they've got. While they, when they go away, they're trying to find that cost. So cost is the challenge. In the comparison to the U.S., you can see here that 2010 was 100% zero, 100% zero, and start in 2012 to see some organizations interested in disclosing some ESG. 2013, it was the it was the peak for which 75% score, which means that these organizations having roughly 0.75 uh, score of their uh, ESG data disclosed, and then it declined. So you can see 2013, 2014 was a decline for both UK or Europe and US due to the cost. So there are challenges here. I'm not pretending here, I'm pretending that this is gonna be an easy job. There's a lack of comparability of ESG data as you've seen. There's a lot of differences. It's very wide. Some organization disclose an annual report. Some of them do it integrated reporting and some do it in sustainability report. The other thing, and that's provide what we call the sustainability service provider gap. However, data are currently predominantly unregulated and that's the other problem. It is unregulated. There, is no, there are no rules, no standards, no regulations. The size of sustainability is, um, is investment market grown consistently and I think the latest data I've got is USD 40 trillion investment in sustainability markets, which is this is result from um, OPIMAS in, um, on August 2020, and estimated that it will increase by 44%. So meanwhile, we have about 3,600 financial institutions in the world signed for the UN agreement, which means the SDG goals, that when they invest on behalf of other organizations, they're going to follow the 17 goals, which is something a bit of a challenge, really. 